Hello and welcome to the Bison Box Office. My name is Katie Valone and I'm here today with Lexi Naples. And this show is geared to college students to, you know, when you're broke and you want to watch some movies, here are some suggestions for you guys to watch. You know, Netflix and chill with your friends. <laughs> um, I always Netflix and chill with Lexi, you know, all the time. But, you know, we have some movies today that we're going to talk about The Martian and Hotel, Hotel Transylvania 2. Mm -hmm. That is a mouthful. But <laughs> uh, right now we're going to talk about The Martian and... Um, it was a great movie about Mars, if you want to talk more about that. Yeah, um, Matt Damon is the lead actor in the movie, and he gets stranded on Mars, actually, yeah. from, there's a storm, and his, like, his suit got punctured during it, yeah. so they just kind of assumed that, like, he was a goner, because it's kind of hard to survive yeah. on Mars. He was, I mean, like, there with his team Not from and personal experience, but I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> haven't, haven't experienced it yet, but... Um, yeah, like she said, and NASA is, you know, trying so hard to figure out, like, if he's dead or alive, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, he also tries to do anything possible to signal to Earth, which I don't even know how I would even think about doing that on Mars. Yeah. But, you know, it's good for them. Um, you know, they also call him the Martian in NASA, aka, you know, the, t the title right here. But, um, you know, it's a great movie, and, and we have, you know, Matt Damon, great star in it, and, you know, the world, like, is hearing about this, and they're trying to figure out, like, how he's going to return home safely, and I can't even imagine, you know, seeing all this, and, because, I mean, I love, like, you know, outer space and all that, mm -hmm. but, you know, even, like, experiencing it is crazy. But we have a trailer for you guys to watch right now, so take a quick look. Every human being has a basic instinct to help each other out. If a hiker gets lost in the mountains, people coordinate a search. If an earthquake levels the city, people all over the world send emergency supplies. This instinct is found in every culture without exception. At around 4.30 a.m., our satellites detected a storm approaching the Ares 3 mission site on Mars. The storm had escalated to severe, and we had no choice but to abort the mission. But during the evacuation, astronaut Mark Watney was killed. <laughs> I'm entering this log for the record. This is Mark Watney, and I'm still alive. Obviously. I have no way to contact NASA or my crewmates, but even if I could, it would take four years for another manned mission to reach me, and I'm in a hab designed to last 31 days. So. In the face of overwhelming odds, I'm left with only one option. I'm gonna have to science the hell out of this. Okay, let's do the math. I gotta figure out how to grow four years worth of food here on a planet where nothing grows. But if I can't figure out a way to make contact with NASA, none of this matters anyway. Houston, be advised. We've got a video message. It's directed to the whole crew. Play it. <laughs> Mark Watney is still alive. Woo! In your face, Neil Armstrong. We left him behind. Let's go get our boy. This is something NASA rejected. So we're talking mutiny. And if we mess up the supply rendezvous, we die. If we mess up the Earth gravity assist, we die. doesn't cooperate. I guarantee you that at some point, everything's going to go south on you. And you're going to say, this is it. This is how I end. Is it possible that he's still alive? 
That was a really great trailer. I think mm -hmm. the graphics in it are phenomenal and it gets you really like into it and thinking like, wow, that's really out there. Right. And you know, just thinking about Mars, like, you know, people are starting to go there now and it's just crazy. Um, Matt Damon, you know, he's a great actor in it. He has a very big role. He had um, a Golden Globe Award for best performance by an actor in a motion picture comedy or musical and he won that so that's really great for him um i mean i mean i haven't seen him in like a role like this before i've seen him right. one role that i mean it's one of my favorite movies how uh, we bought a zoo oh yeah i love that movie because it's just so cute. cute scarlett johansson and all that but i think this role really brought something out and that's why he won it yeah um it's so different from what he's done before and i think that's why he won it yeah. Out of like all the other ones, I know, um, what's his name, Leonardo DiCaprio, I think he got right. it, but it's fine. We also have an interview with uh, Matt Damon, so take a quick look. What's Mark's approach to his predicament of being alone on Mars? Well, Mark has a very scientific approach to his predicament. He, he basically assesses what his situation is and then once he completely understands it he sets about trying to methodically solve one problem at a time. Um, there are so many things that can kill him um, so he just basically has to go down a checklist of, of things and he has to do it every day to basically uh, just maintain uh, um, maintain his situation because you know the, the smallest break in anything <clears throat> you know, if, if the hab breaches in any way, he's gonna he's gonna meet a, a grisly death because um, he'll lose all of his the atmosphere around him. Uh, you know, if he runs out of water, he'll die of thirst. If he runs out of food, um, he's gonna starve to death. So he's 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 in he's in a bit of a fix, but he has a very uh, methodical approach to and the scientific approach to his situation. You know, Matt Damon, I feel like he's always wanted to be an astronaut, and mm -hmm. this is a perfect role again for him. I mean, who doesn't want to be an astronaut? I know right. when I was little, I was like, oh my God, it'd be so cool. <laughs> but now, you know, in all these movies that have come out too, it's just like, wow, there's so much out there for, you know, us to see still. And I think um, The Martian just showed a little bit for us to really think about. Yeah, and it won. Um Best motion picture. Yeah. So just another thing, and it was nominated for how many? There's uh, it was nominated a list. for a lot for Academy Awards. Best performance, awards. best writing, best achievement, in sound mixing. There's like four more, but it just won like so many things. So nominated so many things. Exactly. I think it was an overall great movie. So definitely, if you like, you know, your astronauts and Mars and space movies. Um, the director, Ridley Scott, he made the original Alien mm -hmm. in 1979. So that was really awesome. And, you know, that's really great for him to, you know, get into that genre and stay with it. Um, but overall, The Mar uh, the Martian was just a very powerful movie. Yeah. And you recommend it? Because I do. Yeah. I think I recommend it a And PG-13. Exactly. So it's not you, like it's too crazy. Exactly. Um, isn't Matt Damon on set? Like, isn't he here? Is I it, think so. Isn't Can we call him? Matt? Where are you, Matt? Oh my goodness. Wait. Here he is. It's Matt. Oh my goodness. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Playing with us. So. Playing with you us. Oh. Well, <laughs> thank you, Matt. <laughs> We're going to get into our <laughs> next movie here. Uh, we have Hotel Transylvania 2. Right. You know, nice little kid movie. You know, it's the second one. Mm -hmm. The first one, it was about, um, let me get the name out real quick. Her name is Mavis. Mavis. And uh, she falls in love with this guy, and he's a human. Right. Mavis is a vampire. Yeah. And Maybe you should have mentioned that to start. I should have. <laughs> fell in love but with a human. She's a vampire. But she's a vampire, and her dad is Dracula. Yeah. She falls in love with a human, and that's what starts the first movie, and mm -hmm. you know the love and all that, and how well, you can fall in love with whoever you want, blah blah. blah. But corny. you know, exactly. Corny. corny but corny. you know, that's why it's a kids movie. Um, but we have a trailer for you right now, so take a look. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I... What? That's not how that one goes. What's wrong with... Suffer, suffer, scream in pain. 
Blood is spilling from your brain. Daddy. Come on, you know how I sang it to you. Zombies know no, you like, like a plum. plum. Piercing yeah. cries and you succumb. Still works. Ever since Johnny and Mavis had their little monster, I've been the happiest vampire in the world! Are we sure he's a vampire? Ah! Technically, you have until you're five to get your vampire fangs. Oh, he'll get his fangs. He's just like me. Look at him. Blah, blah, blah. I don't say blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm in love. We've been talking about moving somewhere safer for Dennis. <laughs> but then I'll be all alone. Yeah, don't give me the pouty bat face. We gotta teach this kid how to be a monster. Wow. If we get his fangs to come out, Mavis can't leave. Robby, you okay out there? <laughs> He's fine. He's Blobby. Okay, Murray, show him how to be scary. Oh, mean ho crutun tap! Ow! My back! Oh. For real? We're so happy you came to visit. I love California. 48 flavors. This place is open all night. Right, sir? Yes. <laughs> She's gonna wanna move. I gotta fix this kid now. How are we doing? Move! Oh, he's adorable. <laughs> How cute. Ow! You know who could fix the kid in a snap? Vlad. Hi, Dad. Are we ready to do this? <laughs> Guys, we're running out of time! <laughs> I'm sorry, Blobby. We really meant to call you sooner. Okay, fellas, plan B. Coming through. Happy now! Hit it! Are you kidding me? So overall, I just think that's a very cute movie. Like, mm -hmm. you know, how Dracula just wants him to be a vampire, but you know, he's married to a human. I mean, uh, and Marvis like, we're gonna move away, and he doesn't want them to move away because he's gonna be by himself. And just overall, it's just so cute. It's kind of sad that he's like, oh, I don't want my like daughter to leave. I know. And his like grand, like future grandson, yeah. little curly headed. And he already loves him so ginger much. Ginger running around exactly. and waiting for him like. Just waiting for his fangs to come in so that they don't have to leave the hotel. Exactly. And, you know, Adam Sandler, he plays Dracula in the movie. And I think, you know, there's probably two different sides of Dracula in the first movie yeah. than the second movie. And, you know, he discussed that with us on uh, the set. And we have a clip of Adam Sandler with an interview with us talking about how he was different in the first movie to the second movie. So we'll show that to you right now. He's accepted humans. He's accepted that his daughter is in love with a human. Uh, he's not quite that ha uh, um, pleased that his grandson might be human-y. Kind of wants him to be a little more of a uh, monster, or a little more vampire. And uh, he's trying to bring that out of him the whole movie. I feel like Adam's just like a great guy overall. I mean, we've seen him in very funny movies, mm -hmm. and then, you know, having to be a voice in a kid's movie, I think that's great for him. Uh, I just, he, you know, started in SNL, and then, you know, made all of those movies. I don't even know how many, because he's in so many. But he, And he's so funny in every single movie. Like, I think he is hilarious. What's your favorite movie with him? Adam Sandler? Yeah. Probably... Mm, Big Daddy. I was just about to say that. I was just about to say that. Or Fifty First Dates. But yeah, that's those are one. both really good ones. But uh, now, also in the movie, uh, the one that plays Marvis is Selena Gomez, who mm, is my perfect. fave. She is my favorite. <laughs> uh, you know, she has her nice little cute voice for her, and uh, you know. As I've told you, Marvis is married to the human, so I think um, having Selena for that voice was perfect. And and we, she's just so cute. Like, I know. And everything she's on, like interviews and everything, she's so sweet and like all of them. Exactly. So I think having her for the voice of this was very good. Yeah. And you know, she's been in many, many uh, movies also, had a mm -hmm. show, all of that. So this is really good for her to. She just pretty much does it all. Exactly. And I mean, I I'm so impressed with her and. I feel like everyone else is. Um, for the, you know, the Nickelodeon shows, 
uh, this movie won a Blimp Award for favorite animated movie. So that's oh, pretty. That's, nice. that's, that's pretty, pretty good. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I know those Nickelodeon shows. It is pretty underrated. I feel like like not a lot of people knew about the movie yeah. at all, or like the series. I guess because yeah, it's too cool. But we have a clip of Selena Gomez, uh, a little interview with us. So we'll show you that right now. There's a lot of messages in this movie. I think in general we always try to bring families together, but it's also dealing with growing pains, you know, growing up, leaving the nest, if you will, figuring out how to live your life, and then, you know, Dennis is a whole new addition to the family, and he's different, but learning how to embrace that he's different and support him and love on him, and yeah, I think it's such a, a good, valuable lesson for everyone to enjoy, plus it's just fun. Selena Gomez is just such like a cute and amazing person. Like uh -huh. I just want to be her. She like, is. She's a great person. It was a great role for her to have. Um, you know, we have some great stars in here. We had Selena Gomez, Adam Sandler, Andy Samberg, mm -hmm. Kevin James. So they put really great voices for this movie overall. Yeah. And you know, I think just it was a great movie. I mean, usually for like the second movie, you're like, oh, it's kind of gonna be. That like, ruins the first one, yeah. basically. But I think this one really like brought out, obviously, it won a blimp from mm -hmm. the Kids' Choice Awards. So that's a really good for like a second movie. Yeah. So um, Cute dad-daughter movie. Yeah, I was going to say, I would recommend it for, you know, you and your dad or yeah. like... No matter the age, really. Like, your grandson. So cute. Grandson. It would be perfect for that one. So it would be really good for, obviously, younger kids. But I think, I mean, I still saw it. Mm -hmm. So... Overall, it was a great movie. So now we're going to talk about some movies that are coming out um, to theaters. We have Zootopia, and pretty much Zootopia is like their own world of animals. Mm -hmm. Like, if there was no humans, there's animals. Right. And, you know, they dress up, like, in clothes and... Go to work. Yeah, go to work and live their normal life. But, you know, they still have their... Um, Rivalries. Little, exactly, like... A bunny and a fox. So we have a trailer for you right now to watch, so take a look. In the world of Zootopia, humans never happened, which makes Zootopia a modern, civilized world that is entirely animal. That is an animal. Animals in Zootopia are anthropomorphic. That is just a big fancy word that means they walk around on two feet. They do not go to work nude. Thank you. Almost. That's got it. And they use technology. Okay, there are mammals from all over the globe in Zootopia. Large and small, fast and slow. But the truth is, Zootopia isn't perfect. And just like our world, not everyone gets along. Especially natural enemies. which can create some issues. But nature always gives animals special skills to survive, and while one may have amazing night vision, another may have incredible hearing and an air-powered elephant tranquilizer. So now you know, Zootopia, like nothing you've seen before. That's just such a cute movie. Mm -hmm. Like, I keep on saying cute, but like, those are the type of movies that, you know, kids want to see. And I mean, I would see it still. I mean, you know, overall, like, I mean, any cartoon animals. movies, really. Animals. Like, everyone loves animals. Who doesn't? <laughs> I, I mean, wish I had an animal here on campus. Me too. We have plenty of Preferably a animals. puppy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them. Well, you know. We have our next movie, which is Ghostbusters, and that's supposed to be, you know, a remake of the original Ghostbusters. Um, we have Bill Murray who comes there and they're, you know, he brings it back from the first one, mm -hmm. but um, the cast on there is the homegirl, Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> she cracks me up. She has an obsession, I think. Yeah, Kristen Wiig, which, fun fact, if anyone didn't know, Kristen Wiig is from my hometown, <laughs> Brighton, New York. I know that. Wow. Yeah, and that's only like 20 minutes away from me, so. You're going to go visit her hometown? That's my hometown. When you go home. I, yeah, I pass right <laughs> through there. I was like, that's my hometown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I pass right through there. It's uh, Brighton and then Webster. So, Melissa McCarthy. Or not Melissa. Kristen, Kristen Wiig. Wiig. <laughs> you know, hit me up in Rochester. 
Uh, so we have Kristen Wiig and we have Kate McKinnon, so from SNL. So, oh, so it'll be pretty funny. It's pretty much a lot of funny yeah. people. It's supposed to be funny overall, and, you know, I really want to see it just because they have such strong female roles in it. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the first one was all guys, and now that they're doing all girls, I think it's, you know, a mix-up, and, it, you know, it shows. And like I said, Bill Murray's going to, you know, show up in there and make an appearance, so, you know, that will be really funny too. And what I think you your girl will be hilarious in it. She's always so funny. She cracks me up in everything she's in. Because she'll just do anything. She'll jump anywhere, you know, in Bridesmaids, how, you know, she was, <laughs> I will never get over that. Pooping, so funny pooping in a sink. <laughs> pooping in a sink. But, you know. She was funny in that <laughs> one. We'll show you that she's trailer. Funny. We'll show you that trailer for <laughs> Ghostbusters and take a look right now. Operation. That's okay. She seems peaceful. My name is Erin Gilbert, Doctor of Particle Physics. Ah! That stuff went everywhere, by the way, in every crack. Very hard to wash off. We have dedicated our whole lives to studying the paranormal. Now there's sightings all over the city. There are people out there that need our help. Holtzman, you're a brilliant engineer. Erin, no one's better at quantum physics than you. We can provide a real service. I'm joining the club. You guys are really smart about this science stuff, but I know New York. And I can borrow a car from my uncle. <laughs> uh, you didn't disclose that the vehicle was going to be a hearse. It's a Cadillac! Let's go. Let's go. Oh, oh. Did you want to? Sorry. sorry. I'll let you. I'll let you. Next time. Okay. Someone is creating a device that amplifies paranormal activity. And we might be the only ones who can stop it. Holtzman, come on. The hat is too much, right? Is it the wig or the hat? There's a bigger picture at hand here. These ghosts can possess the human form. The devil is a liar! Get out of my friend! Ghost! Ow, that's gonna leave a mark! The power of pain compels you! Ow! <laughs> See, overall, that's just a great concept for a movie. I mean, I mean, you have the original Ghostbusters, but I think this one is just great for everyone to watch. Like. I know my mom really wants to see it because, mm -hmm. again, Melissa McCarthy and Kristen Wiig and Kate McKinnon, like, they're great actors to yeah. have in there. And, and they work funny. great together. Like, yeah. they're so funny all together. Like, they just play off of each other. I was going to say, because, you know, like, they've been on SNL together, you mm -hmm. know, they've worked with each other. So I think, you know, they're friends with each other. Like, right. so it's just great to have. And I think that's a great thing that they casted them all together because they're all friends. Mm -hmm. They can go off each other so easily. And I bet. Some of that's like improv. Yeah, probably because it's not even like it's work at that point. It's yeah. just like you're hanging out with your friends. Exactly. And then getting paid for it. Exactly. So, you know, thank you for watching us here at the Bison Box Office. Um, you know, one thing that I just want to like talk about is the film club here at school, they play these movies here. So yeah. on May 1st, they're playing The Martian. Mm -hmm. And um, our next episode coming up is going to be our superhero episode. I'm going to have Cody here with us. Uh, he's a great superhero expert. So, yes, I'm going to have him help me out, Cody Coleman. And um, so they're going to have, for the school, um, April 1st, uh, you can go see the Batman versus Superman with mm -hmm. the school. So and it's free. They paid for it. Yeah. I think <laughs> so. they got the whole, whole theater. Probably. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And Martian is May 1st. So. Here. 
you know, just go, you know, see these movies. You know, that's why we're here. Uh, we give these suggestions so you guys can go watch them. Um, again, this is for college students or anyone really, but college students, you know, to get out there and see some great movies and mm -hmm. get our recommendation for it, you know. Got to get ours before you go see it or anything, you know. <laughs> Just so you know ahead of time. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us. My name is Katie Blown, and with me is Lexi Naples. And thank you for watching the Bison Box Office. You want to know what my favorite blooper was? You literally got me burping. Burp. Oof, excuse okay. me. That was my favorite one, too, when she burped. You went. What are you talking about? She's... Burp. Uh. <laughs> I need to take a nap. I need to like put my feet up. Why? I'm tired. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Bison Back Office. Can I start over already? I hate my life. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> And you know, this show is geared to college students for, I'm done talking. <laughs> Give me one <laughs> second. Oh, oh for ear. ears. We we're talking about how we both have big ears, so we're trying to cover them up. Can't see them because our hair. Big ears. Because I have ears? hair over them. No. It's not big. Yeah, huh? But now you they just showed everybody at home. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> My nail broke. My nail back. Now I'm really mad. He now I'm pissed. <laughs> he talked about mine. <laughs> But, um, you know, it's a great movie, and and we have cracked right down the middle. No, right. Yep. I know. I'm just shaving it for after. Yeah. Shaving it for after. Shaving it. <laughs> shaving it for after. I'm saving it for later. We'll show you that trailer for Ghostbusters, and take a look right now. Pooping in a sink. I know. I really have to prepare. You guys ready? I'm gonna show my tat. You wanna know it's awkward? I just burped again, so we'll probably put it on me. Every, every, every credit, Katie burping. She tries to make them like subtle too. She's like, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for joining us. My name is Katie Blown, and with me is Lexi Naples, and thank you for watching the Bison Box Office. Oh my god, my eyes switching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay.